The Rise and Fall of Orbit's Drink. Have any of you seen this funny looking drink that looks like a lava lamp back in the 1990s? If you haven't, the drink was called Orbit's. It was released in 1997 to great fanfare and then suddenly disappeared off the face of the planet just one year later. I was a kid back then, and I remember sharing my Orbit's drink with my friends, and we all thought it was so cool how the colored gummy balls would float suspended in the drink. Today, Orbit's drinks are collectible items and sell for 20 to 30 times their original price on eBay. But is there anything the company could have done differently to avoid going extinct? In this video, I'll deep dive and give you the company insight into the rapid rise and fall of Orbit's drink. How this revolutionary drink rose to greatness and then suddenly vanished. But before we begin, if you guys enjoy videos like this, please take a quick second, click the like button, subscribe button, and notification bell to know when new videos come out each week. With that in mind, thanks so, so much for doing that, and now let's start the video. History of Orbit's Drink the Orbit's drink, sometimes called Orbit's soda or lava lamp juice, was created in 1997 by the Clearly Food and Beverage Company of Canada, which also makes Clearly Canadian sparkling water. Orbit's was a non-carbonated beverage that was a jaw-dropping and futuristic drink at the time it was made. The producers added small floating edible balls, which were aimed at making Orbit's what they described as a texturally enhanced alternative beverage. Despite the boldness of this move, it was not met with the same enthusiasm by all consumers. There's no denying the beauty of Orbit's design. It was a symbol of the peak 90s and embodied the experimental nature of many designs back then. It was representative of the innovations and state of the industry at the time. Clearly Canadian was an industry giant and led the way with many creative products. Orbit's was made from a desire to score the next big hit, and it actually won many awards. Initially, the product had a lot of buzz. Within the first few weeks of release, it was already on everyone's tongues and made good sales in its debut year. Sales for Orbit's were quite good in 1997, with total revenue over $9 million. The Lava Lamp drink gained massive traction on its release and could have gone on to be a game changer in the industry. The brand introduced a lot of attractions and reasons to love the products. But Orbit's sales still kept dropping, and the decline in sales started to happen by the end of 1997. By the first half of 1998, the sales were already about 85% less than the previous year, totaling less than $1.5 million and clearly Canadian decided to kill the product just one year after launch. This is a typical case of a brand with so much promise falling off a cliff due to a string of poor marketing and branding decisions. Many years later, in 2013, the Clearly Food and Beverage Company tried to make a comeback with Orbitz. They released a statement on their plans to create a newer line of products through limited edition. The aim was to satisfy the nostalgia demand of their customer base, and they even planned to continue the production of these beverages annually if the initial efforts were successful. Unfortunately, that never happened and Clearly Canadians sold off their domain Orbitz.com to Orbitz the online travel portal and probably made more profit on that sale than they ever did on the drink itself. For Orbitz lovers, the company has officially gone on the record and said that they no longer have the equipment needed to make the drink. But if they were really confident in making the drink, we all know if there's a will, there's always a way. Where Orbitz drink went wrong, Marketing 101. If you've ever taken Marketing 101, you'll know that a simple way to study a business is by using the four P's, which are the product, the good or service, the price, what the consumer pays, the place, the location where a product is marketed, and the promotion, also known as the advertising. The four P's are sometimes called the marketing mix. Next time you're talking business with your friends, tell them about the four P's and you'll sound a lot smarter. Trust me. So when we look back at Orbitz, two things that definitely went wrong were first, the product, and second, the promotion. The first Orbitz fail, product. Having a good product is the fundamental value that a business provides to consumers. It is ideal that a product already fulfills an existing consumer demand or that the product is so compelling that consumers really want to have it, thus creating new demand. No matter the brand, once some core business principles are breached, a brand's sales and consumer appeal are sure to take a nosedive. 
Even Coca-Cola made this error with their new Coke product a long time back. For sure, the Clearly Food and Beverage Company of Canada got a lot wrong with the Orbitz beverage. Orbitz drink appearance. First, the appearance of the product can be debatable. The suspended tiny neon balls of gelatin looked weird and suspicious because it left so many wondering how the balls could stay intact even after vigorously shaking the bottle. This was due to two techniques. The balls were suspended in a liquid with almost equal density, which made them defy gravity, and they were also held in place with gelatin gum, which actually has the same connective strength as a spider's web. To some, Orbitz was more of a science experiment than a viable business because the manufacturer chose to focus more on the product than the consumer's choices. Naysayers are quick to point out that the suspended gel balls look too artificial and quite disgusting to drink. However, the truth is, others thought it was really cool, and that's why the product was flying off the shelves initially. So there was no right or wrong with the appearance of the product itself. Although some hated it, for sure the product's appearance definitely caught everyone's attention when they saw it for the first time. Orbit's drink taste. Even though the intention of creating a futuristic and totally cool product was appreciated by some, the key problem was that almost all consumers found the actual taste of Orbit's drink repulsive. Let me tell you the flavors. Flavors of Orbit's included pineapple banana cherry coconut, blueberry melon strawberry, vanilla orange, and Charlie Brown chocolate, amongst others. Just try imagining the mix of all the artificial flavors combined together in your mouth. Pineapple, banana, cherry, coconut? The flavors were way too artificial, and consumers were confused by the incoherent flavors and were disgusted by the taste. If you do a quick search on YouTube of Oryx drink taste, almost all the reviews are negative. People describe the taste as repulsive, cough syrup, pine sol, and like old water from a flower vase. With comments like these, Orbitz clearly failed at the core product offering of creating an enjoyable tasting drink for consumers. If a product tastes bad, consumers won't be repeat customers after trying it the first time. And that's exactly what happened to Orbitz. After trying Orbitz the first time, no one bought it again, except for diehard fans. Clearly Canadians should have figured this out much earlier by doing some taste tests to make sure people would appreciate the flavors that they had created. In truth, the uniqueness of the Orbitz drink appearance brought it to the limelight, but the lack of great taste was enough to bring it down and out of the market. In summary, if you can't interest your consumers with the taste of your drink, it's only a matter of time before they stop trying it. Orbitz was a good product with a weird, confusing, and unpalatable taste. In a bid to try out an innovative approach, they ended up creating a drink no one wanted. While the company should be praised for their amazing idea, the taste was a turnoff for too many. Unfortunately for Orbitz, taste is the most important feature to consumers when making food and beverages, especially if you want to build a loyal customer base. The second Orbitz fail. Promotion. Aside from the problems with the product, there were also glaring errors in the marketing efforts. The second marketing P that Orbitz clearly failed at was promotion. Promotion is the strategy of having customers find your product, explaining why they need it and why they should pay the price for it. Although sometimes crazy ad campaigns can be catchy and help you stand out, the Orbitz ad campaign can only be described as one of the biggest marketing failures of all time. To sum up quickly, the Orbitz ad campaigns were a total joke with one of the key catch lines being the drink with balls. This might seem audacious and maybe weirdly cool, but it only freaked people out. When the marketers noticed this, they went with a different line, claiming Orbitz was a new age beverage from the planet Orbitz. This might seem like a better approach, right? But then clearly Canadians still went ahead to write a headline on their now defunct website, which read, prepare to embark on a tour into the bowels of the Orbitorium. No brand comes back from such a comedy of errors. The mention of the word bowels in the same breath as a consumable beverage was a turnoff for everyone and certainly the end of the drink. Orbit's price and place. 
When you look at the final two marketing P's, price and place, these two factors were not deciding factors in the demise of Orbitz. Orbitz was priced at a slight premium to other beverages, but the fact is consumers were okay paying the price for the drink, especially in the beginning. In terms of place, which is the distribution of the product, although clearly Canadian was not as strong as Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola in its distribution network, the eventual issue that led to the collapse of Orbitz drink was not the storage of drinks or the difficulty in buying the drink, so these two marketing factors of price and place did not significantly affect the success and failure of Orbitz. Conclusion That brings us to today. In summary, Orbitz drink was a revolutionary idea with poor execution. Could Orbitz drink have survived till today? A lot of factors contributed to the eventual end of its production, and most of them were self-inflicted. There's no telling what could have been. Orbitz was revolutionary far before its time. To give an example, the bubble tea culture with floating tapioca balls and milk tea started becoming popular in the early 2000s, and then it took another five to 10 years for bubble tea to become an American obsession. Also, sugary drinks like aloe vera juice, as well as coconut water, both of which can have jellied remnants in the juice, have risen in popularity as people are becoming more used to having chewy bits in their drinks. So what do you think of the Orbitz drink? If you were the CEO of the company, is there anything you would have done differently? Do you think clearly Canadians should reintroduce the drink now? So with that said, again, thank you so much for watching my video on Orbit Soda. There was a significant amount of research and work that went into making this video possible. So if you wouldn't mind giving the video a like or sharing it with your friends, it would really help out a lot. If you like videos like this one, be sure to check out some of my other content like the rise and fall of Huffy and the American bicycle industry or the rise and fall of Honda. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you again next week on Company Insight.